Cheers, mate. Well, Tally ST doesn't rule. Amiga rules. Fuck off. Aha! Whew, sweating. Who'd have thought it? Tripping over a dead lemming. Anyway, I've decided to get myself one of these. Now, the last time I was this excited about opening a computer was when I got the wild, weird and wicked pack Amiga 600 that sat gracefully there on my top shelf, which I will show you in a minute. Um, this Raspberry Pi 400 is going to end up being my ultimate Amiga emulator. So let's crack on with the unboxing. Right, well, here we go. Quick look around the box. What do you get in the box? Meet Raspberry Pi 400, your complete personal computer built into a compact keyboard featuring a quad core 64 bit processor, wireless networking, dual display output, 4K video playback. This is the most powerful and easy to use Raspberry Pi computer yet. Surf the web, edit documents, watch videos, and learn to program using the Raspberry Pi OS desktop environment. Included in the kit, now I've gone for the full kit rather than just the basic computer with nothing get the raspberry pi computer usb mouse power supply sd card with the pi os already installed on it hdmi cable and a beginner's guide because i am a beginner obviously you don't get the tv as well and there's your specs which is pretty much what i just read out there so anyway let's crack on right as i mentioned before I'm, i wasn't joking i haven't been this excited since i got that amiga 600 back in 1990 whatever it was when it come out and to be quite honest with you up until this moment i was never really a fan of the raspberry pi if that makes sense they always come across as a bit too like complex for me and i'm a very impatient person so it was just kind of like whatever raspberry pis i've got i've bought or pre-installed hence the uh, zx box spectrum emulator which runs off a raspberry pi zero and I've got a Raspberry Pi 3, which is my main Amiga emulator. Obviously, I've got real hardware, tons of it, but it is nice now and then just to emulate something. And also, if you know you want to get into Amiga and you can't afford some of the systems because some of the prices nowadays at the 1200s and that have just shot right up, you've got to get it. If it hasn't been recapped, recap it. Then there's like accelerators and all that palaver. You could be talking like seven, eight hundred pounds. So this to me is just like i want to try it out and i want to install something called pi Mega, which i've heard quite a lot about and i've actually had a little google and youtube of it and it looks rather straightforward so anyway let's crack on with the unboxing first things first keyboard very nice very well built feels really nice and solid quick look at the back there what I mentioned on the box it's exactly the same hasn't changed basically it's a raspberry pi 4 it's elongated here rather than the square thing that you usually get i'm not going to open it because to be honest with you there's no screws and there's just tabs and i don't really want to break it on my first day opening it but looking at it you know it's color wise looks like the amiga boing ball um color scheme white and red although i know it's like a raspberry kind of color uh, this is kind of reminds me of the boing ball i might swap that out and have a little bit of a i've got actually got a boing ball sticker i might put over that um feels really nice really nice and well made right and that's the keyboard right under the hood we have a micro sd to full size sd card reader with the nice raspberry pi logo on we have an official USB-C power supply, which is what I've been after for a while, actually, because my other Raspberry Pi voltage is a little bit too low on it, so it keeps coming up with the um, with the lightning bolt. Nice little emblem etched into the plug there. Nice long lead by the looks of it. USB-C adapter. Let's get that out the way. 
and an official Raspberry Pi mouse. Do we need to cut this open? Yes, I do. Again, nice colour scheme on this, matches the keyboard. And then again, why wouldn't it? Nice and clicky. USB adapter there. Now, underneath, you have a HDMI or micro HDMI to HDMI cable. Again, that looks quite long. Nice. And this is something I am actually going to read because I'm not one for reading. But I am getting into these pies. So I'm going to take the time to actually have a read through this book. Although I have got a mate there who's going to help me. He doesn't know it yet, but he's going to do it all for me. I'm only joking. Yeah, so anyway, let's get it set up and I'm going to have a look at the operating system for the very first time. Right, a quick change of the old t-shirt because it is currently 26 degrees outside and I am sweating. I just thought then while I set this up, there's only one thing that I need to do and it is unfortunately get rid of something, which I'm sorry, Amiga. It's, I know it's a Raspberry Pi and it's smaller and it runs more stuff than you could ever run, I think. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Goodbye, old friend. It was nice. I'm joking, by the way. The Amiga's back. Didn't go in the bin. I will not have anyone bad mouth, condone any violence, or back chatting against the Amiga. That was just all for show. Anyway, we're all set up here with the Pi, aka my new Amiga, joking. Um, righty ho, let's turn it on. Right, so here we are. Um, on first glance, it looks like, reminds me of like, like a Mac desktop. But anyway, right, UK, British, Times on London. Yep, yep, and yep. Um, next. Setting location. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to have a mess around with this desktop thing. And then I'm probably going to put a couple of me preloaded SD cards in to see how that fares. I'm going to put the ZX Box Spectrum emulator in and I'm also going to put my Raspberry Pi 3 Amiga um, set up there as well just to see what what's what. Right, it's asking for a password. I shall be back. Right, I'm just waiting for the updates to download. In the meantime, there's a little pussy kitten. Say hello to everyone. Hello. Where's your mate? Is he behind me, is he? Yeah, he's there somewhere. Anyway, see you in a bit. Taking this bloody time, this one. Anyway, while we're waiting again, here's some more pussy. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing down there? Hey, leave the tripod alone. Yeah, do you want to mess with a... Mess with a wire? Hey. Here she comes. What's that? What's that? What's that? Hey, what's that? Right, updates installed. Right then, we're back. All updated. So a quick look around the operating system. Um, and then what I'm going to do, I am going to put the ZX Box Spectrum emulator inside it. Well, when I say inside it, I'm just going to take out the SD card and I'm just going to put it in the Pi. I'm going to see how the Spectrum emulator works with the keyboard. It'd be nice to see how it works. Little uh, Pi Zero there. Firstly though, I'm going to have a little look around this operating system. So we have some sort of menu button, programming, education, office, internet, Chromium, Chromium, white web browser, VCL player installed, nice, graphics, image viewer, games, Minecraft PI, socket, Python games, Boeing, Bunny, 
cavern, Myra pod, weird, accessories, help, preferences, run and log out. Let's try and boot up the Tinternet. Is it double click? Yeah. Right, okay. That's pretty. Is that still loading, is it? Yep, something's loading up. Right, let's try. And um, just close that down in that web store. Right, Chrome, Google, yeah. There we go. We have. Can we have that full screen? I oh, will see the graphics. Um, kind of breaking up as you as you move. It's not like it's smooth, but it's it's breaking up. So let's try YouTube. Righty help. Let's try one of my um, videos. When it loads up. Right, okay. A bit slow at loading up there, if I'm honest. But I didn't get this for a web browser. This is for an emulation device. Right. So let me see my last video, which was Shadow of the Beast 4. Oops. Full screen it, let's have a look. Shadow of a Beast is a platform game developed by Reflections and published by Psygnosis in 1989. The original version was yeah, and was later ported to other systems. The game was known for its graphics with many... It's a bit slow like. If you haven't seen Shadow of the Beast 4, Go and check that video out. It's not Shadow of the Beast 4, it's Soul of the Beast. Yeah, it's a little slow, but, you know, as I say, I didn't buy it for the internet. Right, let's close that down. And we'll run, just as a little test, Minecraft PI, or Pi. Start game, create new. Now that is quite nice, if I'm honest. That's nice and smooth. Never really played Minecraft, never really give it much time, but maybe I might on this, I don't know. Yeah. Right, how'd you get out of this? Quit to title. Oh yeah, just close that down there. Right, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, it does do some screen turn when you move it like that, but you know, as I say, it is what it is. You can't expect a high-end gaming PC for a hundred pounds. It's, it's what I paid for this. The sweet age of forty-four, I got some money. Still getting money for my birthday, so I thought, let's get a Raspberry Pi four hundred. Right, okay. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn this off, and I'm going to. Uh, plug in the ZX Box Spectrum emulator SD card and I'm gonna see how it works with that. Do you know what it amazes me? The size of that. I mean look how small that is. And that can like play every Spectrum game ever made. Back in the day, if someone come up to me and said 30 years time, 20 odd years time, you will be playing your Spectrum on a device no bigger than your finger. I'd have told them to piss off. Anyway, SD card out. SD card in. And we turn on the pipe and we should. Boot up. Some technical 
fucking issue here. Right, I don't need a mouse. Um, I'm not going to use it with the joystick because this is the updated SD card with the joystick and for some reason something just fell off. Right, so for some reason that is outputting at a rather weird resolution. It's 720, but um, let me just pick a game anyway. I'll actually tell you what, let's not, let's... Let's reset the pie and see if I can get it full screen or oh, ish. Right, okay, it's loading. It's got that small screen in the corner. Again, I'm a Raspberry Pi noob, so I'll get, well, I'll look into it or I'll get a friend to, to sort that out and get it where it should be. So I'll try the Amiga one and then that will be it. Right, well, I've had a few issues with the Amiga one as well. Uh, Amoebian, it was running. I just assumed, now I am a noob, yeah, I know I'm not an expert on pies. You just put your SD card in the back and it runs. Obviously, it doesn't. A quick call to a good friend and he tells me that it, I might be running a, name, a different version of OS, Raspberry OS or whatever. So I'm going to sort them issues out at a later date. That's not really, you know, priority at the moment. My main priority at the moment is getting PyMega set up and running on this guy called Chris Edwards, who has made uh, PyMega. I'm going to have a look at his YouTube channel now. I've been recommended to uh, go there and see how you set it up. So I'm going to do a separate video on that if I'm successful. And um, we'll, we'll take it from there because this was just, as I say, it was just bought mainly for Pymedia. So cheers for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next video.